الحمد لله الحمد لله يا رب ما حمده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأكرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاه سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد فعلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنه من يأتي ربه مجرما فإن له جهنم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا ومن يأتيه مؤمنا قد عمل الصالحات فأولئك لهم الدرجات العلا جنات عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها وذلك جزاء من تزكى ولقد أوحينا إلى موسى أن أسر بعبادي فاضرب لهم طريقا فاضرب لهم طريقا في البحر يبسا لا تخاف دركا ولا تخشى فأتبعهم فرعون بجنوده فغشيهم من اليم ما غشيهم وضل فرعون قومه وما هدا يا بني إسرائيل قد أنجيناكم من عدوكم ووعدناكم ووعدناكم جانبا طور الأيمن ونزلنا عليكم المن والسلوى كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم ولا تتغوا فيه فيحل عليكم غضبي ومن يحلل عليه غضبي فقد هوى وإني لغفار لمن تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا ثم اهتدى وما أعجلك أن قومك يا موسى قال هم أولئك على أثري وعجلت إليك ربي لترضى قال فإنا قد فتنا قومك من بعدك وأضلهم السامري First of all, we give all praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam and his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you continue with the tafsir of Surah al taha currently on verse 74, we've been speaking about <clears throat> Musa alayhi salam, the competition that he had with the magicians. 
we saw Musa alayhi salam defeating the magicians as he threw his staff, it swallowed all of their sticks and all of their ropes that they had. And as a result of that, the magicians recognizing that what Musa alayhi salam has brought was not magic, but really a mu'jiza and a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after recognizing that this is no worldly thing, this is not created from man, this is no spell, realizing that this is coming from the creator, they immediately accepted iman. So they bow, Allah says, for ulkiya sahara to sujjara, the magicians, they fell into sajda, into prostration. And they said, Amanna bi Rabbi Musa wa Harun. We believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. Immediately accepted because they knew that that was the hak, that was the truth. We'll see that Fir'aun, he also knows that it is the truth. Every step of the way, he knew that what Musa alayhi salam had brought was the haqq and the truth. But yet Allah did not grant him with iman. And this is why it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who gives iman, who gives guidance. <clears throat> Even though you, you know that something is the truth, does not mean that you're going to be guided. Because Fir'aun, he knew that what Musa alayhi salam has brought is the truth. He knew that the God of Musa alayhi salam exists. And we were going to see because he would ask Musa alayhi salam to remove whatever tests Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in front of them. Because he himself knew that he's not God. He don't have the power to remove anything. He doesn't have that authority. So he was very angry seeing that the <clears throat> magicians had teamed up, as you could say, because that is what he claimed, that this is a kind of thing that was planned from before. Yeah, he says, Musa alayhi salam is your kabirukum. He's your chief. He's the one that started this. He's the one that taught you this much. And most likely you have planned this way before. And then come here now and do this to me. Make me look as if I am the loser. So he started to blame a collaboration of Musa alayhi salam and the magicians. And then he placed a threat on the magicians. And this threat was to see if they are going to remain loyal to Musa alayhi salam and Harun, or if they are going to return back to the ways of Fir'aun. So his, his threat was, I am going to cut off your hands and your feet on the opposite side. I'm going to take off your right hand. I'm going to take off your left feet. And then, and then I am going to crucify you on the trunk of a dead palm. As you mentioned last week, that he was the first to do that, to implement crucifixion as a form of Adab. And he says that I'm going to do this as a form to teach you a lesson. So this was to really kind of scare the magicians, for the magicians to forego what Musa alayhi salam was teaching, forego what Harun alayhi salam had brought and return back to Fir'aun. But it did not move the magicians. They have now just one sajda they have performed. But the iman, the strength of the iman, they were not ready. They said, you could do what you want to do. We will never go back to our false ways. We're going to remain on the path of Surat al-Mustaqim. We're going to hold on in the straight path because they got Iman. And they understand what is Iman. So they hold on to that Iman and they said, Fuck the man, taqad. do whatever you want. If you want to crucify us, go ahead and crucify us. If you want to cut out our hands and our feet, go ahead and do that. Because whatever adab and punishment you give, it is only for this life, not for the next life. Recognizing that this life is temporary. What punishment you give to us, whatever hardship that we have to go through with you 
faith in you. It is only temporary. But as we return to Allah, that is everlasting. And we want to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pure. And then they said, we ask Allah to forgive us. We hope that Allah is going to forgive us for all of our sin, especially the sihr that you force us to do. As you mentioned, he was the one that used to force all the young boys to go and practice or to learn magic and to learn sorcery. So they continue in verse 74. It is mentioned from onward 74 until 76. They continue speaking to Pharaoh. So this is what the magicians were saying to Pharaoh. So they, they, they said to him, you could do whatever you want to do. We're not going to accept you. We're not going to prefer you over Musa alayhi salam's God. They said to him as well, do whatever you want. Certainly we believe and we hope that Allah is going to forgive us our sin. Wallahu khairu wa abaka. And then now they had some advice for him. So for some of the four, it's like an advice that the magicians now, they are given to Fir'aun. Maybe he had already placed his threat. I'm going to kill you. But look, they, they were very convinced that, you know what, this is the truth, and they were not budging at all. So they said to the Fir'aun in verse 74, إِنَّهُ مَا يَأْتِي رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا He said to Musa alayhi salam, <clears throat> sorry, he said to Fir'aun, so this is the magicians saying to Fir'aun, إِنَّهُ مَا يَأْتِي رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا Whoever comes to his Lord guilty, Whoever comes to his Lord guilty, for inna lahu jahannam, certainly for him will be hell. For him will be jahannam. La yamutu fiha wa la yahya. He will not live where he neither dies nor live. You do not die there, you do not live. When we say live, which means you do not live in peace. You do not live in comfort in the fire of jahannam. So, إِنَّهُ مَا يَأْتِي رَبُّهُ مُجْرِمًا Suddenly, he who comes to his Lord as a mujrim, not as a kafir, did not say as a kafir, he says, whoever comes to his Lord as a mujrim. Mujrim means guilty. Mujrim also means a criminal, someone that commits crime. So, whoever comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a criminal, someone that has been guilty of a crime, committing a crime. That is, as he stands before Allah on the day of judgment as a mujrim, then inna lahu jahannam, jahannam is going to be for him. Jahannam will be destined for him. And more than one place Allah uses the word mujrim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, wa wudi al kitab, when the book is given. But we all know we all of us will be given our book of deeds. Some of us, our book of deeds will be given in our right hands in front of us. Some of us, our book of deeds is going to be given in our left hand behind our backs. Allah says, al -kitab, when the book is given. Allah says, if you only see the mujrims, Allah says, if you only see the mujrimin, how mushrikeen, how fearful they are on that day. Because as you get the mujrim, they're going to get their book of deeds in their left hands, behind their back. And as you get the book of deeds, you're going to know everything that is inside the book. Allah is going to grant you such good memory that you're going to remember every single detail. And you're going to, as you see into that book, you're going to know everything is true. Not no lies at all in that. So all the crimes that you have committed, all the salat that was missed, everything is going to be there. So Allah says the mujrim now, if only you see the mujrimin, mushrikina mimma fihi, Fearful of what is inside their book. They are going to, the word mushfikin 
means you're in such a fear that you start to tremble. You're shaken out of fear. Allah says, if only you see them. Because these same Mujrimin, while they were on the face of the earth, they were considered to be boastful and arrogant. If you say anything to them, they would hush you up. So boastful and arrogant, they felt that they had all the authority and all the power. Allah says, if only you see them on the day of judgment. Mushfikina mimma fihi. Fearful of what is in their book. <clears throat> And then they're going to say, Ya Wailatana, oh Allah, who want us? We are destroyed. Mali Hadal Kitab, we are destroyed. What type of book is this? La Yugadiru Sagira Tawala Kabira. Nothing has been left out. Nothing big, nothing small. Every single thing is in there. And if you are resurrected as a mudrim. You get that book of deeds in your left hand. You already know your destination. So think about the among the fear and the fright. Allah says, وَلَوْ تَرَائِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَكِ سُرُوسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ Allah, in another surah, in surah Sajda, Allah says, if only you see the mudrimun. If only, and Allah keeps telling you, if only you see them. Because right now, you see them in a different way while you're in this dunya. But if only you could really see them on the day of judgment. Allah says, Allah says they are going to be bowing their heads out of shame and out of fright, out of embarrassment. Allah says they are going to be bowing their head in front of their Lord. Because they will know exactly what they did. Rabbana absarna wa sami'na farja'na na'mal salihan inna mukinun. And they're going to say, Rabbana absarna wa sami'na. Wallah, we have seen now. Now we have seen what the adab is about. Now we have seen that you are really the creator. Now we see that Islam was the true religion. Absarna, now we see. Now we are really listening. All the time we are just hearing, but now we are listening. Send us back. We will do good deeds. But there's no returning back. So here, the magicians, they are saying to Fir'aun, because the actions he is planning to do, that is to crucify them. He is going to be a criminal to take a life and to take their lives because of their iman and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are advising him, if you continue along this road, along this path that you are heading, to just kill people innocently because of their belief in the true creator, that one day you're going to come to that same creator. And when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, you're standing as a mudrim. You're standing as a criminal in front of Allah. And if you stand in front of Allah as a criminal on that day, فَإِنَّ jahannam, The only destination you have to go is in Jahannam. فَإِنَّ jahannam. Certainly for him, it's only going to be Jahannam. لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا there's no la mutu fiha. There's no death in Jahannam. Wala yahya. Neither will there be any life, as you could say. You're going to be alive for no life. Because if you're not dead, you're not going to die, then definitely you're alive. But no type of is no type of comfort in that type of life, a life of punishment, a life of adab, that you're going to wish that if only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could take your life. Anyone who goes in the fire of Jahannam will beg and plead for their lives to be taken. We want to die. 
You see, that is the difference. Whereas we are in this life, we don't want to die. Don't want to die. And if we, if any one return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a mujrim or as an unbeliever, and they enter into the fire of Jahannam, they are going to wish to die. Wish if Allah could just finish it, die and done. But la yamutu fiha wa la yahya, there's no death in the fire of Jahannam. We know of so many, so many adab the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us about. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep on mentioning about the amount of different types of adab. How hot is the fire of Jahannam? What is the food of the people of Jahannam? What is the drink of the people of Jahannam? How they are going to be? So many times. So he's saying that this is the magicians. They are saying, if you come to, if you continue and you reach Allah as a mujrim, only Jahannam is going to be your abode. La yamutu fiha wa la yahya. In another ayat, Allah says, La yakhda alayhim fayamutu wa la yukhaffaf anhum min adabiha. Says that the adab will not have such an effect that will cause them to die. Wa la yukhaffaf anhum al adab. Neither will the adab be lightened. Knows you are torturing someone, sometimes you might fear that they will die out of the torture. So you don't want them to die. What you will do is you're going to lessen the amount of torture just so that they do not die because you do not want them to die. Allah says the adab is going to be worse and worse. The adab is not going to be lightened, but yet they're still not going to die. They're still not going to die. Every time the skin is burnt out, in another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every time their skins are burnt off, Allah badalna juludan ghayraha, Allah replaced it with another skin. Just so that they could taste the adab, taste the punishment. So la yukhafaf an humal adab. And Allah says like that, we recompense those who are kufur, those who are unbelievers, those who are ungrateful. Allah says, only the wretched will avoid paradise. Only the wretched will avoid doing good deeds. And who are the wretched? Who are the unfortunate people? Allah says, Allah Yaslanar al Kubara, those who are going to enter into the great fire. Those who are going to enter into the great fire. Then they will not die in it, neither will they be alive in it. That is no peaceful living in the fire of Jahannam. Wanadaw ya Malik. Allah says, and they will call out to Malik. Malik is the, the angel who is in charge of the fire of Jahannam to keep rekindling the fire of Jahannam. And he is there, but he's not being punished because Allah has created him specially for the fire of Jahannam. So that's, the fire does not harm him. The fire does not bring about any type of pain or not angel, and his task, because angels are created for specific duties. So his only purpose that Allah had created Malik, the angel of the fire of Jahannam, is to keep on rekindling the fire of Jahannam. So the Jahannam is, Allah says, Wanada ya Malik, they are going to call out to Malik. They are going to call out to the angel in charge of the fire of Jahannam. لِيَقْدَ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ Ask your Lord. They're asking the angels because Allah is not going to answer them. But if an angel is asking, maybe Allah might answer the doers of an angel. So ask your Lord. لِيَقْدَ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ Ask your Lord to end us. Not give us Jannah. Ask your Lord, to just allow us to die. That is all we want. We just want death. That is the dua they are going to resort to now. 
as gina angel axolot for us to die qala innakum makithun allah says allah is going to reveal to the angel malik allah is going to say to reveal to him that he should say to them innakum makithun you have to remain here forever there's nothing like death innakum makithun even though you are pleading for death there's nothing like that you know, there are some who are going to enter into the fire and then they're going to be taken out from the fire of Jahannam. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, was he was doing khutbah one day and he came across the same ayat. إِنَّهُ مَا يَأْتِي رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ لَا يَمُوزُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا and the Prophet said, those who are deserving, those who are deserving of the fire of Jahannam, that is, those who die without Iman. You die without Iman, die as an unbeliever, then you are deserving of the fire of Jahannam. So those who are totally deserving of the fire of Jahannam, that is, they die as an unbeliever, La yamutu wala yahya. They are not going to die in the fire of Jahannam, neither are they going to enjoy their life in the fire of Jahannam. But he said there are others whom they died with Iman. And because they died with Iman, the fire of Jahannam is not forever for them. They have to enter into the fire of Jahannam to remove whatever sins. So whatever amount of salah they didn't pray, they have to go into the fire of Jahannam to remove that. Whatever sins they have committed, they have to go into the fire of Jahannam if they are not forgiven by Allah. If Allah forgives them, yes, and Allah is the Al-Ghafur. Whoever Allah wants to forgive, Allah is going to forgive. But whom Allah does not forgive. And they are placed in the fire of Jahannam for a period of time. They are going to remain there until Allah allows the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu to be accepted for them. When that intercession is accepted, and Allah is only going to accept that intercession when he knows they had the amount of punishment they had to get in the fire of Jahan. So when they had enough, according to Allah, and all of this is according to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, only Allah knows how much years they're going to have to stay there. So when Allah feels that this is enough punishment, Allah, the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ida saru fahman, they're going to become as how you have cool. They're going to be black with a amount of punishment, a amount of fire. And only after they have punished so much in the fire, Allah accepts the shafa and the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on their behalf and then they are going to be brought, taken out of the fire. And some narration mentioned that Allah is going to instruct the Jannatis to pour water from Jannah on them. And as they pour the water of Jannah on them, it is going to remove all the effects of the adab that they were facing. And others say that in another narration, it says that there's a river known as Nahr al-Hayat, which is known as the river of life. And they're going to be told to enter into that river. And as they enter into that river and they come out of that river, there's no signs of adab again on them. All that punishment, there's no sign again of adab. And then they will get to enter into paradise. So these are those who die with Iman. But yet, they were still guilty of certain sins that were not forgiven. They are going to be allowed to leave after some time. But here when Allah says, La yamutu fiha wa la yahya, refers to those who die without iman. So if you die without iman, then there's no coming out. They're just there forever. So this is what the, the magicians, they are saying to Fir'aun. Think about it. This is this is where you are heading. You want to sacrifice us. You want to crucify us. You want to cut off our hand or our feet. You go ahead. 
we're going to be patient and undergo all this punishment. But know that when you go in front of Allah, this is what you're going to have to face. You're going to have to face Jahannam, which is forever, not temporary. And in the next voice, they continue their advice <clears throat> to Fir'aun. He says, وَمَا يَأْتِيهِ مُؤْمِنًا قَدْ عَمِلَ الصَّالِحَاتِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمَ الدَّرَجَاتِ الْعُلَىٰ Whoever comes to him, and that him refers to his Lord, Whoever comes to him or whoever comes to his Lord as a believer, that you that is you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment as a believer. Having worked righteousness, that is having done good deeds, these will have the highest ranks. These will have the highest ranks. <clears throat> so whoever returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment where their hearts are filled with iman there's iman in their hearts <clears throat> their speeches are filled with iman that is with a kalima, la ilaha illallah, and they have done righteous deeds. Then Allah says, for them, they are going to have very high ranks, which tells us there are different levels in Jannah. So just as how they are, we know that there are seven heavens, different levels of Jannah, there are also different pits of the fire of Jahannam. So Jahannam, there are different depths of the fire of Jahannam, just as how there are different levels in Jannah. So the force will be for those who just get to enter. And as you keep on doing more and more, you get to climb higher and higher. And this is why the Prophet was speaking about those who memorize the Quran and those who read a lot of Quran. So some of the opinion that hadith speaks about those who memorize the whole Quran, whereas others have the opinion that those who keep on reading and reading and reading all the time, Allah is going to instruct them, Ikra, to read on the day of judgment. Read. And as they start to read, Warutaki, Kama Kunta Taratil, read just as how you used to read in the dunya. And as they keep on reading, they're going to be elevated. And they're going to stop at the last ayah that they recite. And where they stop, that is going to be their jannah. That is going to be their paradise. So if you stop at the, the last, then you get the highest of all, which is jannah to the firdaus. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al Jannatu Miatu Daraja Ma Baina Kulu Daraja Tain. In one narration, he says, even though there are seven heavens, he says there's a hundred levels in Jannah. There's a hundred daraja, a hundred levels in Jannah, wa ma baina kulla daraja tain. And between each level, the distance between each level of Jannah. He says, Kama baina sama iwal ard. It is like that of the heavens and the earth. That's how we watch up and we see the heavens. He says, That is the distance between one level of Jannah to the other level of Jannah. <clears throat> and he says, Waminha, he says, Wal firdaus a'laha daraja. He says, Firdaus is the highest level in Jannah, the highest you could reach. He says, from Firdaus, from the Jannat al Firdaus, the four rivers flow. And we know in the hadith of the Mi'raj, there were four rivers shown to the Prophet. He says, those four rivers flow from Firdaus. And the Prophet he says, the Arsh of Allah is above Firdaus. Because Firdaus is the highest heaven. 
and the arsh is even above that. And it says, فَإِذَا سَعَلْتُهُمُ اللَّهِ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Whenever you ask Allah for Jannah, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Firdaus. Jannah to Firdaus. Because that is the highest. Ask for the highest. Even though you might say, no, I hardly pray in Salat and I don't know if I just want to get. No, ask Allah for Firdaus. With however our actions are, always ask for Firdaus. Jannah to Firdaus. Because if you don't get genital fertiles and you go wrong a little bit, at least you're still inside. Don't just ask, well, I just allow me to enter. No, don't do that. Because if you don't get to enter, you end up in trouble. So always ask for the highest. Always ask for genital fertiles. In another narration, which is recorded both in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he Says in Ahlul Iliyin, Layarona Man Falkahom, Kamatarona Al Kaukabal Gabir fi Ufukis Samai, Ita Fadulma Bainahom. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the inhabitants of Iliyin. Iliyin is one level of Jannah. Says the inhabitants of the Iliyin, they are going to see those who are above them, just as how you see a fading star in the horizon. So it's very small because of the distance, how far away it is. And the companions, when they heard that, he says, Lita father of my bainahum. And this is because of the superiority of one over the other. Because this set did more good deeds than the other. So when the Companions for that they asked Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Telka manazul al ambiya. Definitely that has to be for the ambiyas. Such a high station have to be for the ambiyas. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Bala, definitely. But walladi nafsi biyadi, he says, I swear by that one in whose hands is my soul. It is also, even though it is for the Ambiyas, the Ambiyas are going to be there in Jannah al that was the highest of all. But he says, it is also for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who really obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the Messenger of Allah. And he says, Inna Abu Bakr and wa Umar la minhum. He says, suddenly Abu Bakr and Umar radil anhu is from amongst them. Abu Bakr radil anhu and Umar, they, the two companions, they are from amongst them. So, was all the Ambiyas are going to be there? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying, Abu Bakr and Umar has done so much of good deeds. They have devoted themselves so much to Allah and their Iman is so strong that Allah is going to grant them to be where all the Ambiyas are. And not only them, but others as well. Because he says, men who believe in Allah and follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are also going to be there. So as long as your Iman is strong enough, you're going to be able to be there. And the next ayat, which is the last advice Last advice of the magicians to Fir'aun says, Jannatun tajri min tahtihal anhara. Explain to him, what is that darajatul ula? What is that darajatul ula? What is that high rank that you could get? So they say to him, Jannatun adnin tajri min tahtihal anhar. It is that Jannah, that garden of paradise that is adn. Adnan, which means that it is going to be a residence for them, that they're going to remain there forever. That is Jannah to Adnan. So when you hear about Jannah to Adnan, Jannah to Adnan, such a Jannah, such a garden, that they're going to live in it forever. They're not going to have to move from it. They're not going to be thrown out from it. They're going to remain in it forever. So Jannah to Adnan, 
which rivers flow from beneath it. Tajri min tahti al-anhar, khalidina fiha, they're going to remain in it forever. Remain in it forever. And then he says, وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ Says that is a reward for him who purifies himself. This is the ending. Dalika Jazau man Tazaka. They're speaking to Fir'aun, the greatest criminal. The wars amongst the Kufars, amongst the unbelievers. Who is going to later on plan to crucify them? Say Dalika Jazau man Tazaka. This whole Darajatul Ula. High ranks and Jannah, which is forever, that have all this river flowing beneath it, and you're going to remain in it forever. Says that is the reward for those who purify themselves. Mantazaka. He didn't say that is the reward for those who just do good deeds. He says those who purify themselves. And Tazaka refers to Tazkia. Taskia, which means to purify your heart. Whilst we have purification of the body, we have wudu, we have gusal, tayamum. These are things that purify your body outwardly. But taskia is purification inside, in your heart. Those who purify their hearts. Purifying your hearts. One is washing your hearts to remove envy, removing jealousy, removing doubts, removing <clears throat> hypocrisy, removing greed, to remove all of that, removing kufr from the heart. That is, that is, those are the people who are going to get the Jannah. Mantazaka. And how do we purify the soul? Purifying the soul is getting near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing a lot of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us in the Quran. The way that we purify the soul is through our ibadahs. Through the remembrance of Allah, the recitation of Quran, to salat. These are the things that are going to help us to enter into paradise. <clears throat> so it's successful indeed are those who zakaha, those who purify it. That is purified enough. The ayat before Allah was speaking, wa nafsi wa ma Allah is speaking about your nafs. And then Allah says, that same nafs, that same desire, that same longing that you have Inside of you, Allah says, for the aflaha man zakaha. says, successful are those who purify the nafs, <laughs> purify your desires, that you, you make your nafs in such a way that your nafs is only pulling you towards doing good deeds. Your nafs is pulling you towards going, doing good deeds. Now, how do we know our nafs is pulling us to do good deeds? Initial stage of your nafs is your nafs is telling you to do evil things because your nafs works with, with shaitan. Shaitan uses that form of weakness from you in order to tempt you. So when you realize that your nafs is only tempting you to do evil things, and if you give in to it, then your following your nafs. You are kind of obeying your nafs. Allah says that that one is ruined who? Dirty his nafs. That is he's following his nafs. But then that same nafs if you anytime the nafs is telling you to sin to disobey Allah and as you say you put down your foot say you know what? I'm not listening to you. I am the boss. I will say what I want to do. And if you be disciplined enough to say to your nafs, you know what, I'm not going to follow you. I am going to do what I want to do. And you do not listen to the nafs. 
And every time the nurse tries to do that to you, the nurse is telling you, drink a little thing, or don't pray, or gamble, commit fornication, those kind of things. And you tell yourself, no, nah, I'm a Muslim, I'm not going to do that. And what you're doing there is you're putting on your foot. That's the first step, you put on your foot. And as you put on your foot, and you continue to obey Allah, after a period of time, you realize that that same nafs who was telling you to do these things, that same nafs is telling you to do good deeds now. So when you're, you're not doing good deeds, there's something telling you, hey, long time you didn't read Quran. How come two days passed and you didn't read Quran? But what is telling you that? That same nafs, that was what, what I've told you to go and do this evil and that evil. But because you put down your foot, that same nafs is telling you, you know, hey, a long time you didn't pray a little Salatul Tasbih. Why don't you go and pray Salatul Tasbih? And that, that now, that nafs push you towards doing good instead of pushing you towards doing evil. So he's saying, Dalika jaza'u man tazaka. That is the, the jaza and the recompense for those who purify yourself. And we could all reach that status. We could all reach that, that state where our nafs is only encouraging us to do good. We could reach that, but it's a lot of hard work. It's not something that just comes overnight. And you just see some people, they are in their ibadat and feel that, you know what? He just blessed by Allah. It's not about being blessed by Allah. It's a lot of work. You have to put down your foot and do not allow shaitan and the nafs to pull you onto the wrong side. So this is the advice of the magicians. This is the last of their advice to, to Fir'aun. But... Fir'aun was not given hidayat. He was not given guidance. So he didn't have time with what they were saying. He listened to all of this that they said to him and still crucified him. Still cut off their, their hand and their feet and still crucified him. All of them were crucified. All of the magicians. And again, it was a form of making a lesson of others to others that, you know, if you go against me, this is the type of punishment I'm going to give you as well. But they were all given Jannah. So they were crucified in this temporary world. But in the hereafter, which is everlasting, they were all granted paradise. And as I mentioned, that's what kind of good deeds they did. Now, look at, look at that, this advice that the magician has given for Fir'aun. And they were Muslims for how long? They just accepted Musa alayhi salam didn't sit down and give them long lessons on who you have to believe in. It is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah inspired them to say these words to Fir'aun. Because now they're, they're, they have Iman, but all of this, for them to say all these things, they had to have knowledge. Only with knowledge you were able to, to give this type of advice to someone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to come out from their mouths to Fir'aun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired them. And they were saying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to say. And they all got Jannah. So it teaches us that as long as we strive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do the rest for us. But all that is upon us is to make that effort. As long as we make that effort, Allah is going to help us and grant us all Jannah to fair doubts. But this, inshallah, we end verse 76. In our next session, inshallah, we're going to continue with verse 77. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa natubi ilaik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisikun. Salaman ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.